So let's do the hands on. What am I going to do is that I'll be creating an HTML page wherein I will get an account details of a customer and then I'll have another button wherein I can modify an account details of, an custo of a customer. And this is how the architecture would be. This is the HTML page. And in the HTML page, we'll take customer ID as the input. So here the user will type the customer ID and whenever the user presses the go button, it will call an API to get account details of a customer which will be there in EC2 instance. Similarly, there will be another button or another information like we'll put the account ID here and whenever we press the go button, it will go to the EC2 instance and EC2 instances will get the information from Aurora database. As this is the first time that I'm talking about a web application, so far we have been using only Postman. So instead of an HTML page, I have been using Postman to send the API request to the EC2 instances or to my local machine. And now as the requests or the API requests would go from an HTML page, let's try to dissect and understand the problem a little bit more. Okay, so this is what the page is. We have customer ID, an empty box and then the go button. Likewise, we have account ID, an empty box and the go button. So I'll take example of only one of them. Both of them would be more or less similar. So in this empty button, what would happen would have the variable value. So customer ID is one variable and we'll put the value of customer ID here. Similarly, for account ID, which is the variable, we'll put the account ID's value here. And then whenever we press go, clicking of this button should convert to an API call like this. What do I mean by this is we have this base URL which would be the IP address followed by the port number and then the URL endpoint would be get cust details. This get cust details would be there in at the rate app dot route decorator and along with it will pass the variable cust ID equal to certain value and this value 1120988 would be written here. Okay, so whatever we write, we have to pass it using the cust underscore ID variable and the button press should get converted to this URL endpoint API call. Once this is done, it would go to the application or the Flask application, which is there either in EC2 instance or in local machine. I'll show you in my local machine. You can try it out in your EC2 instance. That would be the exercise for you. All right. So this URL endpoint would be mapped to a function definition, which would get cus details. Now, instead of returning value, we want to show this in an HTML page. Because we are not using Postman or any other Python application, we want to return the output in an HTML page. So we'll have to return the HTML page. And then the HTML page would be shown like this, which is the customer ID, account ID and account balance. The points of consideration in this hands-on would be to convert the button click to an URL endpoint and an API call. This is the first one. And the second one will have to find a way to return an HTML page along with the variable values. And then we should show the HTML page. So let's open PyCharm and do the coding. So this is my code. Everything remains the same. We have imported Flask. We have imported request object. We have imported PyMySQL module also because I'll have to connect to the database. On top of it, I have imported something called render underscore template. This is also an object. Then we have this standard function which would connect to the database. And after connecting, it would return the connection object. And then we have this app.route. So in the path, I have mentioned slash, meaning this, is, this would be the home page. So, or the main page, whatever you might want to call it. The method that, that I have mentioned is get, and it would be handled by the function main page. Now, what should we return here? This is a question. I have not mentioned anything here. Then you have another route, which is get customer accounts. It is similar to what we have done earlier, getting the record from the database, and then I'm returning it in a list. But instead of returning the list, we'll have to send an HTML page, and these values should be gone to the HTML page also. And then finally, the get account details, again, method get, and I'm getting all these details from the database, and we'll have to return something. I have not mentioned what I have to return. 
So let me go back to the problem statement and we have already solved the coding. I have not written what to be returned. Let's address this one by one. First, I want to address the main page. So it should be an HTML page. Then I'll address the button click so that whenever you click a button, it gets converted to an URL endpoint or an API call. And these things would be handled in the HTML code itself. And this is my main page and this is the HTML code. I'm not an expert in HTML code, so please bear with me with the naive website design. Anyway, that is not the purpose. The purpose is to make the conversion. Okay. And here I'm using a form if you see. So this is uh, the starting of a form and this is the ending of a form. So I'm sending a form and here I'm mentioning an action which is the API endpoint and the method is get. So this form would send a variable in customer ID and here I have mentioned that the value would be captured in cust ID variable and whenever you have a button click this variable and its corresponding value would be sent along with this get cust accounts endpoint. Now in the second one I have the form action to be get account details method is get now this is the variable account id and the value would be captured in this text so whatever account id value that you put it would be captured in this variable and by mistake i have mentioned this so so on button click what, I, what am i saying is that pass the variable whose name is account underscore id and whose value has been captured is in account underscore id from this input type text and pass it along with this url endpoint Okay, this is the main page. So after the main page is shown and the button is clicked, it would be converted and then it would go to the program. And then I'll have to return two pages. One is for account details and the other one is for customer details. So let's look at the HTML page of the customer details and the account details. This is the second one, which is customer details page. And what it is doing, it is getting an array in the variable array data. This is the variable which would be sent by the program and then I'm capturing the account ID and the account type for this customer and he, this is where the value of customer ID would be shown. And let's mention the account balance also. I forgot to add account balance and this is how you pass variable inside of HTML and the account balance would be the fourth element. And this is a for item and this is how we print an array in HTML. So this is the customer details page, meaning how many accounts are there for this particular customer. Then you have the account details page, wherein I am printing the account ID, the account balance, account type, currency code, opening date, last update date, date, etc. And notice the variable name and these are the name of the variables which should match in the program. Whenever we use the Flask application to return or render this template, the values should be captured in these variables. The name should be exactly same. Okay, the HTML pages are done. And one thing that I wanted to show you is that all these HTML pages should be inside of this folder templates. So now it is time to actually tell you about the folder structure. This is the folder, this is the main folder ho.08.flask web application. Inside of it, I have the code flask web application html.py. And then I have the file also, which is bank account data. There are 1 million rows here. And inside of this folder, I have this templates folder also. Notice the name, the name has to be templates, not template. And inside of templates, I have account details page which is this one, which is showing the information of the account. Then I have customer details page, which is this one. And this page is showing all the accounts for a particular customer. And then the main page, which is actually the main page. So this page would be shown whenever you open the website or type the URL or the IP address. Now, all these are inside of templates folder. Let me show you in file explorer also. So this is the folder HO08 Flask web application and inside of it I have the code and the bank account data.csv file and I use this file to load the Aurora database. 
And inside of templates, I have these three HTML pages as you can see. Okay, so the HTML pages are done. The program pseudocode or the skeleton of the program is also done. In fact, I also wrote the logic. The only thing that is pending is how do we return these web pages in the browser from the Flask application. And that is where we use render underscore template. So instead of returning variables, would be returning the HTML page, which is main underscore page dot HTML. And we'll be using the met method render underscore template. Now what this method would do, it would take this HTML page and it would show it in the browser. Now similarly here for get customer accounts, I'll have to use this render underscore template and what page do I want to send? I want to send the customer details page. So I'll, I'll mention customer underscore details underscore page dot HTML and here I would send in the accounts render template account details underscore page dot HTML. Okay, first thing is that all these HTML pages should be there in the templates folder. So all these pages are there in the templates folder customer details page is there account details page dot html is also there and main page dot html is also there but we are not sending the variable yet but let's try it out let's see what happens i'll execute this it is up and running and let's open the web page in my local machine it should open the main page so this is the main page it says welcome to www.3im.in enter any one details below either customer id or account id so i have copied this account id now if i click on get account details take a look at this url so if i click on this as you can see what is happening the moment i click the url endpoint changes so with that button click it it adds this get account details endpoint and passes the variable account id there's no output because then even if i have passed the account id which is actually there in the database but it is not showing me anything because I have not passed any value with the variable. Same would be the case with the customer ID also. Let's pass one, two, three. And if you see, there's no output because we are not passing any variables. So we'll have to pass the variables. This account is there in the file. Let me show you that. This is the first account actually. We have this account in the file which, and I have used this file to load Aurora so this actually is there in aurora database also now let me try it out in aurora let me connect to aurora and show you that that particular account is actually there as you can see the account is there but still it is not being shown because I have rendered the templates, but I have not passed any variables. So of course I'll have to pass the variables. And remember the name of the variable should be exactly same as that of the HTML page. So let's open the HTML page. In the customer details, I'm using this array data, which is an array in HTML. So we'll have to make sure that we pass this array data. And I have this item list, which is actually an array. So let's mention array data equal to item underscore list. This is done. And in the account details, we'll have to pass these many variables, account ID, account balance, account type, etc. And the name should be exactly the same. So along with the account details page, I'll have to pass these variables. So this is the HTML variable name, and this is the variable which is there in my Python program. So this account ID is actually this account ID account balance is this account balance and so on but the, the account id account balance account type on the left hand side is actually the variable in the html page okay so i think we are done let's start the program okay it is up and running i'm not using ec2 instance please go ahead and try it out in, in ec2 instance also and this is the main page and this is the account id so i should get one account information so as you can see i have this account information with account balance 3951 
account type is this one currency code is dollar opening date uh, last update date etc right so now if we match we have assa the balance is 3951.22 currency code is dollar etc now what will i do i'll try to find out how many accounts are there for this particular customer the customer id is 1986 so for that i'll have to go to the this page and i'll have to type 1986 and let's get the customer details and seems like these many accounts are there for this customer and the account id is this one account type is this one and account balance is not being shown that's fine let's try to find out what is the problem so account balance i am sending the account balance in account accct balance and let's see okay i have not even selected the account balance that is the problem and the column is balance and i guess it should work now and i'm passing it in array data data if you see let's try it out okay so now the account balance is being shown okay so if i go back and get the customer details i can see all the account balance let's try another customer uh, id i'll get it from this file uh, let's say 1275 and account details for customer id okay customer id is also not being shown here let's fix that but anyway uh, account balance is being shown the account ids are shown the account types are shown i know that the formatting is not correct for that we'll have to actually make the html page much more fancy uh, i did not do that because the purpose is not to show you how to make an html page fancy but rather how do you send data from html to python flash now one thing that i forgot to mention is whenever i click on this get get customer details look at how this url changes so if i click on this as you can see the url has changed and this is what we have seen in the introduction also wherein i had shown you some real life examples of apis whenever you click a button or whenever you click a link the url endpoint changes and this is how it works obviously the web pages there are much more uh, advanced they use css javascript etc but this particular web page is pretty straightforward which is using plain and simple html but whenever i send any customer id it is changing the url and making an api call it is hitting the python flask application connecting to the database getting the information from the database and showing us back in the page now let's fix this before we conclude uh, for customer id the customer id is not being shown and the problem here is that i have not sent customer id so let's do that so now i'm sending customer id if i refresh it is sending this api again and now you can see the customer id so whenever i re refresh what is happening this endpoint is getting called which is making an api call so database connection is happening getting the record and showing us if i change this customer id let's say to something else here itself and press enter as you can see the customer id has changed the account ids have changed and the account balances have changed also typically what you do if you have a page of course we do not do it this is a plain and simple page in production this is much more complicated because authentication token is sent uh, a lot of information are camouflaged etc but here it is a straightforward html page so that's why you could change this one last thing that i wanted to mention is that i'm making the connection only once to the database i'm not making connections with every call if you see here i do not have any database connection call here neither i have it here nor in this fun function so how am i doing this i'm defining this global variable conn and this conn is actually a call to the function this is an object and the object would be sent and it would be stored here and as it is a global variable i'm using the same variable in all the functions so this is where i conclude flask theory and we have talked a lot of things now what am i going to do i'll be going to the next section that would be flask in action wherein i'll consolidate all this information whatever we have we have learned so far and then we'll create multiple projects based on real life scenarios